Okay, so uh, for the next couple of days I'm in a place called Fulmut, which is in uh, Hermanus, just outside of Cape Town, about an hour outside of Cape Town. It's an absolutely uh, stunning place, this, and uh, this center, Fulmut, which means full of courage, uh, used to be a leper colony uh, that was started uh, by the Moravian church to care for uh, lepers who eventually were moved from here by the way to uh, Robben Island which of course was where Nelson Mandela was imprisoned uh, after the Ravonia trial in the 1960s so it has that uh, kind of connection to it but the reason why we're here this week is uh, we have a colloquium which uh, one of my colleagues Robert Fosler and one of our extraordinary professors at Stellenbosch, uh, John de Grucci, uh, arranged together each year. And the topic for this year's colloquium is uh, religion, culture, and violence. So uh, we kicked off last night. It's a very, very fruitful and worthwhile discussion. And today we'll continue uh, with that topic. Now this, uh, this valley is particularly uh, beautiful. I've spent uh, many hours, perhaps too many hours, uh, riding my mountain bike uh, around here. There's a beautiful waterfall just on that side and uh, Euodia cycles here in Amanus have these magnificent trails. Uh, I think there's about 60 kilometers uh, mountain bike trails through here and it's absolutely stunning. It's, it's a fantastic day uh, of good exercise in, in this kind of beauty uh, in the Feinbos. Uh, to, to come and enjoy. So as I mentioned, the uh, colloquium uh, this week uh, is focusing on religion, culture and violence. Last night we kicked off with uh, three inputs. Uh, Graham Ward, who uh, is a professor of divinity at uh, Oxford University, and uh, Theo De Witt, who's from Tilburg University, gave us a European perspective. Graham spoke on, on the United Kingdom and uh, on uh, perspectives uh, on religion and violence from there. And then a professor called Michael Battle, who's uh, from New York. And uh, each of them gave their perspectives on those three contexts where uh, religion, culture, and violence uh, enter into a, yeah, a, an intersection of uh, sometimes destruction and hurt, for their communities and at times uh, religion becomes the factor that uh, breaks down violence or engages it in such a way to bring peace and social harmony so it was absolutely fascinating I have a few thoughts about that intersection myself that I'll share with you as soon as I catch my breath I'm almost at the top of this uh, little hill Okay, now, if you see me hobbling a bit, don't be surprised. Uh, I ran a half marathon on Saturday with some colleagues and uh, <laughs> it, uh, it was quite tough and I, uh, I hurt my uh, ankle a little bit. I think protecting my knee, as strange as that sounds. Uh, if you want to hear a little bit about why we did that, uh, go and see my video, Half a Commitment. And there's another video I made about uh, a commitment fulfilled. Where you can go and see about uh, how I ran and why I decided to run that little half marathon. Uh, I'll put links to those in the show notes. So as I mentioned the uh, topic of uh, this week's colloquium is religion, culture and violence and uh, we know that at the intersection of uh, those three aspects of society and reality there can often be uh, destruction and hurt and harm. We've certainly seen it uh, in Europe in recent years, um, yeah, the killings in uh, France and uh, going back to the United States, uh, the 9-11 bombings and certainly throughout Africa, 
uh, with the Islamic State and uh, Boko Haram uh, in Nigeria and we know that religion certainly certain forms of uh, religion can be uh, an informant uh, a support for views that uh, that are violent that abuse others persons who are not of that particular faith tradition or who are seen uh, to be threatening the values of a particular faith tradition now why is this so well uh, i'll share with you just three ideas uh, on that the first reason why i think this happens is because uh, religion very often functions as a form of social cohesion that actually has to do more with social psychology than with doctrine uh, people belong to religious groupings and traditions um, because it gives them this tremendous uh, sense I'm going to stop here and enjoy the view for a moment but it gives them this wonderful sense of uh, belonging they belong to a particular community they find a place where their identity is supported where psychologically uh, they find what they need to give them that sense of uh, yeah, belonging an identity to know who they are in a, in a world which is can be quite uh, challenging of, uh, of individual identity and if suddenly you have this community that tells you you belong here and uh, there are certain things about you that are valuable certain things that others may not understand that we the in-group understand uh, that kind of in-group out-group identity can uh, lead to a measure of conflict because often identity is formed uh, in negation so we uh, we form our, our identity by saying that we are who we are in the sense that we we are not like you uh, our identity is different from yours so that sense of uh, of social identity and religious hegemony uh, can be a contributor to violence i think the second thing that um, that can be a contributor to violence is that uh, at times religious doctrines um, particularly doctrines of preference that we have God on our side that our God is the God who wants to protect us and protect our way of life these beliefs uh, sometimes give people the inner strength that they need the reasoning the uh, the social motivation to be able to uh, to engage others in a way which under other conditions would be considered uh, inhumane or inappropriate so for example religious wars and wars that are fueled by a sense of doctrine uh, i remember the uh, the aftermath of the invasion of iraq when george w bush was asked why he did it and because there were no weapons of mass destruction he said well because god had told him so and uh, that sense of of religious conviction which in some senses seems to defy reason uh, can be a very very damaging thing so the question is is religion uh, should it should it be a valid form of, of uh, social engagement or is it just negative well the one thing that we did hear from the participants last night is that we do need to be conscious of uh, negative forms of religious socialization and formation and certainly uh, negative forms of uh, doctrinal and religious belief like the two examples I've just given and there are certainly many other forms, negative forms of uh, religious engagement the abuse of uh, women, minority groups, minority sexualities all of these things are there but the reality is that these are not just religious phenomena these are often cultural and social phenomena and uh, what the participants said last night is that one of the things that religion does offer as a, as a sort of gift uh, to the world, to society is the fact that uh, in these communities there is the possibility of creating uh, a, a, an opportunity for people to think and engage in different ways often ways which are uh, counterintuitive uh, sacrificial uh, ways that seek uh, the good of the other rather than just the good of the self and uh, certainly if we look at this in the teachings of Jesus uh, if we look at it in uh, Islam uh, this uh, faith religion of peace uh, we can see that there is certainly opportunity uh, for that kind of way of engaging in uh, religion in society that if we take it seriously if we see ourselves as a 
as a grouping that is intended to work for the good of all society, that's not intended to exclude but to include an inclusive faith. If we evaluate our doctrines and beliefs and see whether we uh, have inadvertently come to hold or believe something uh, which is not only not true but not in keeping with our religious tradition, uh, then we have the, the means to be able to engage it because that's what religion does. It gives us this sort of reflective and transcendent capacity to overcome prejudice and to work for the common good. So maybe that's my uh, encouragement to you today is to uh, invite you to reflect a little bit on the religious and theological beliefs that you have, uh, the way in which your religious community is formed or structured, and uh, to ask you to consider, are there any things in there that may be seen as exclusive or abusive that deny the dignity and the value of human persons or of uh, outgroups in relation to your in-group? And uh, are these views, these practices that you have, these mechanisms, uh, are, they, are they true? Are they in keeping with uh, the religious tradition that you have? Are they in keeping, for example, for me as a Christian, with the teaching of Jesus, uh, the Prince of Peace, uh, this man of love? And if they're not, perhaps there's an opportunity for you to uh, utilize the very best of your faith to bring about change and blessing and joy uh, for those around you, particularly for those who uh, are minorities, those who have the smallest voice, the least amount of power in your society. So remember, this is not a lecture, it's just a thought. And uh, yeah, you know, let's be, let's be critical and real about our faith so that it can serve uh, the purposes of uh, the God whom we love and the people whom God loves. Okay, I need to uh, finish up my walk. Uh, I can't uh, walk in the sunshine, as you can see, it gets a bit washed out, uh, the colors there. But uh, I want to finish up my walk and uh, then head in for breakfast. So thanks for watching the video. Uh, please can I invite you, uh, subscribe, uh, then you'll be notified of new videos as they come out. Please like the video, it makes it a little more visible. And uh, if you have uh, a comment or a thought, I'd love to hear from you. How do you think about these issues? Uh, can religion be positive? Is religion only negative? Um, what are your thoughts on uh, the, the relationship between religious traditions? Leave me a note in the comments section below or hook up with me uh, at Digital Dion on Instagram, on Twitter or on my website DionFoster.com. Thanks for watching.